In this lesson, we'll talk about object animators, which is a way of animating that depends on the object's current values. Let's see how we can do that. I'm gonna head into Android Studio, start a new application. Let's call this one Object Animator. And in my Object Animator, I'm gonna go ahead and wait for everything to load up in here. And what I wanna do is I wanna head into my layout to add, a, add at least one object. So in here, very similar to the last time, I'm actually not going to explain it a lot. I'm gonna basically go ahead and make a box. So that's going to be my box. This is going to be a view. It's going to have a background and that background is going to be a red color so I can see it clearly in here. And now I'm also going to add a button in here. So I'm gonna drag a button over here. This button, I'm gonna say it is horizontally centered and it is sticking to the top at say 20. And this button, the text on it says animate and it is actually saying animate button. And this one is as before my red view. And that's all I wanna be doing in here within my uh, layout editor. So the rest of it has to be within my actual code. In my code, I'm gonna head into my uncreate. In my uncreate, I'm gonna actually add a click listener for my button. I'm gonna say animate button set on uh, click listener. And in here, we wanna basically go ahead and make ourselves a, uh, an object animator. In here, I'm gonna show you first how we could make a single object animator. Then I'm gonna show you how we could actually make uh, more than one. Let's go ahead and say in uh, my object animator in here, in my button when it is clicked, what I wanna do is I wanna say value. Let's say I wanna move it on the translation of Y. So I'm gonna say translation of Y. It becomes a object animator, object animator of float. So because we know the type of the animation we wanna cause is float. If we knew if it is of the type RGB, we would add of RGB, so on and so forth. Now for the float is saying the very first thing you have to feed into me is the target. So the target is the red view. Then we're gonna have to feed into it the property name. So I'm gonna say view dot translation of Y. That is what I wanna change. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say, what is the current value of the property that you wanna feed? I'm gonna say red view dot translation y whatever is its current value then i'm going to go ahead and say make it red view dot translation of y plus let's say 100. so what it does is basically says i want to move things on the y find the current y add another 100 to it and make it that uh, just like the last time we have to decide about the duration so i'm going to say translation of y dot duration let's say this time 500 milliseconds another thing we could do is we could actually decide about the type of the interpolator interpolator which is basically the way the animation runs whether you want your animation run in for instance a linear mode which is basically a linear interpolator which means it goes from the value of this one to this value in a linear mode in every millisecond, it adds a certain amount to it. You could make it like bounce interpolator, which basically makes it to go slowly at the beginning and faster at the end. Uh, there are several different types of interpolator. I suggest that you know you have a look through the documentation so get yourself a little bit more familiar. I will show you a few of those uh, myself soon as well. Now, we got the basics of, a, of an object animator ready, and this should very well work. Let's go ahead and see uh, what we have in here. If we run our application, and we head into our Android emulator, we should be able to tap on this uh, button every time and move our object. Yes, it moves, and it moves in a linear way, and that's, uh, that's great. Now, I wanna actually go in here and make a few changes, uh, not because of any particular reason, I just wanna show you how we would do it, even though I'm pretty sure you guys uh, would already be able to manage it. I wanna basically put all of this stuff into a function so I can call this function uh, from time to time for whatever I wanna be doing. Let's see how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go in here and say, actually outside my uh, uncreate, I wanna have a new function. Let's call this one function. I'm gonna call it animate. Now this function of animate is supposed to do 
uh, all of these things except that I want to be able to feed different objects to it so I know which object actually gets animated I want to feed different types of interpolator to it so I know which object uh, what type of interpolator happens I want to feed different durations to it and I want to type uh, feed different animation types to it so let's see how we're going to do all of these things what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to copy this I'm going to say let's copy that paste it entirely in here now the very first thing is I don't want this to always be on the red view so I'm going to cut that out in instead of that I'm going to say target is an argument in here of the type view so you get applied on the target so that's the first thing then the second thing I want to be doing is I want to actually say what kind of property I want to feed into it the property basically has two uh, values one of them is the uh, type of the object and then the other one is the type of the property so I'm gonna go in here and say let's call this one let's call it property and then my property is going to be of the type property of types view and let's say float for now we could make it even more extensive that it would accept other types but let's you know uh, let's keep it let's do it one step at a time so instead of doing the animation on the view.translation of y i actually want to run it on the property so whatever we feed in there that animation will run then we have two other values we have a value from and then we have a value of two so those are going to be very easy i'm going to say from that's going to be a float and then i'm going to have a two which is also going to be a float so this becomes from and this obviously becomes two so that's also taken care of then our animation has a duration so that makes sense to be uh, customizable so duration which is also uh, an integer if i'm not wrong this time uh, or, or rather a long so i'm going to say the duration becomes the value for here and then we have perhaps the more complex one which is the interpolator so i'm going to say i have a value let's call it interpolator which is of the time of the type time interpolator and obviously that becomes my interpolator so basically everything that was done within this animation block statically we are basically putting them into arguments of a function so if we call that function that function is going to add that uh, for us now let's see what's the point of doing this thing i'm going to go up here and instead of doing this whole uh, block of code i'm actually going to comment it out i'm going to say instead of that when i click on my button do this say animate and the animate it says well you have to feed all of these arguments so the value of it is red view then uh, the property for it would be i think uh view dot translate y if i'm not wrong so it would be view dot translation y so i want to animate the translation y of it then it's going to say what's the value that you want to feed into it i'm going to say uh, let's say uh, red view dot translation y and then the other value which is the two value of it is the same plus 100 we're just trying to mimic what we had in here uh, exactly so that has to have an f at the end of it then i'm going to go ahead and say the duration is 500 and then it says what is the interpolator i'm going to say this time is decelerate interpolator so i'm feeding all the values to the animate and it's going to go ahead and animate the y axis or animate on the y axis now if we run this application now we should see exactly the same thing as we saw before uh, minus the fact that the interpolator is different last time was linear this one is uh, decelerate let's see that yes so that's working now what else i could do i could actually go ahead in here and i could apply the same set of formulas to get a animation on the alpha for instance so i could go ahead and say let's copy this paste it in here so whenever we click we get the animation on the y-axis but we also want to get animate the alpha and i'm going to say the object is the red view but the value that i want to animate is alpha so the transparency 
the value of it is going to be, uh, let's say from one, this is one. Let's go to uh, one F of course, let's go to zero F. Let's keep it at 500 milliseconds. So they go along with each other. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, the, the linear in in interpolator would do better in here. So linear interpolator. So what's happening this time is if we run this application now, both of these animations will run uh, almost parallel to each other. We tap that and as it's going down, it also gets to be completely uh, invisible. And that's, you know, the purpose of having this function here. Again, uh, something that, you know, you might need. I have definitely had situations when I needed this. That's why I wanted to show it to you guys. Uh, there are other ways of running animations parallel to each other. That's called an animation set that we'll see really soon. But this is also a good handy way of running different kinds of animations. And you can also change the durations between them. For instance, you could say that it gets to be transparent a lot longer, let's say in two and a half seconds uh, than uh, the object movement. So you can play around with this, try different ways for it. And uh, this was like a very basic introduction to how we do an object animator. Uh, let's keep it up here, up to here, and let's move on to our uh, next lesson.